so glad that you're here with us tonight for our um, American Dental Assistance Association Town Hall. My name is Cherie Busby and I am your hostess with the mostest for tonight. And I'm so glad to welcome you to our event. So um, I have some friends that are with me that we're gonna meet and talk about. So I'm gonna go and let them introduce themselves. But before they do that, I should tell you who I am too, right? So not only am I your hostess with the mostest, but uh, I am currently serving as the secretary for the Illinois Dental Assistance Association. Um, and that's my fun job. And my real job, my day job is I do dental assistant education for Heartland Dental. So if that's how you can get hold of me if you're interested, I would love to talk to everybody who's out there. So I have some friends that are with me tonight. I'm gonna start on the top of my screen with Miss Betty. Miss Betty, tell us, besides your whole name, where are you, where you're from and what you do? Well, I'm Betty Fox, and I am from Knoxville, Tennessee area, and I'm the current president of the American Dental Assistance Association, and I'm so happy to be here this evening. And we're so happy to have her too, right? Okay, how about Malia? Hi, everybody. I'm Malia Flynn. Um, I currently am the 7th District Trustee, and I serve Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota, and Wisconsin, and I'm really glad to be here tonight, so talk to you soon. Oh, that's awesome. And it's still cold up there too, right? Oh, kind of um, freezing. A little bit. A little bit, right? Uh, we also have Natalie with us tonight. Natalie, where are you? And tell us what you do. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie Kavetsky from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am a two-time past president of ADAA. Huh. And during the day, I work in public health at Children's Dental Services, either at the clinic or in a hospital operating room. That's awesome. I know that's a very fulfilling job you have there, right? Been doing it a hot minute. We have a very special guest star with us tonight. Miss Carolyn, tell us who you are, where you are, and what you do. Hey, everyone. I am Carolyn Coons. Um, I am with Ultradent Products. I'm based out of Minneapolis. And I am looking so forward to talking to all of you about uh, curing lights, specifically the Velo curing light and We'll get to that in a little bit, but I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, I'm so glad that you're joining us, right? So that being said, before we get started, I want to tell you guys a little bit about our program tonight, right? So the first thing I want to tell you as, as the American Dental Assistance Association, we do not endorse or promote products, okay? However, we do have to have speakers that come in and help us. So when you hear uh, or anything about that, just know that these are the speakers' opinions and they're um, from their company or whatever they're promoting, right? The second thing is we have a contest that's going to be going on as we go through the program tonight, right? So um, the contest is of trivial questions that we're going to ask, and then there's going to be prizes at the end of the program. So that's the second thing. I want to tell you guys that we know that the last year has been crazy daisy, right? I think everybody on the planet knows that we are in an unprecedented time. And I'm so proud of the work that the Dental Assistance Association has been doing to help dental assistants to be informed and being able to connect in this way. We have reached out as a, as a as a association, right, as an organization, um, to bring you virtual content like this, like we've never done before. So we're we're stretching our little rubber bands, and we're learning how to do things, and, and we're getting more and more comfortable. But I just want to tell you that everybody, you are making a difference with every single thing that you do. And I find that it's amazing that all of a sudden, during the pandemic, people realized that they had teeth. And that amazes me because, we are busier than ever, right? All of our offices are so busy because people realize that now they had teeth. So <laughs> you guys are stepping up um, to put up with all the PPE shortages and the CDC guidelines that are changing every two seconds and, and all that. And I just wanted to say thank you that we really appreciate what you do for, the, uh, for the, your patients and support your doctors and your teams. So tonight, I've already talked to you about the trivia contest and everything for that. Uh, we're going to have some greetings from Miss Betty, who you turned about earlier. We're going to talk about membership in the ADAA and what that means to you and to me, right? 
We've got some testimonials that we're going to share with you. And then Miss Natalie's going to talk to us about the, the value of going through the fellowship and the mastership program. Then, as you heard Miss Carolyn say, she's going to have our little demonstration and our, uh, not really a demonstration, but maybe there might be, you know, there might be show and tell involved, right? Um, so we're going to talk about some curing lights. And then I have a special promotion that we'd like to share with you guys, too. Okay, so I think I want to ask my very first trivia question. So the way this is going to work is you guys would go ahead and put your answers in the chat of the Facebook. And then our buddy Blake is going to uh, kind of help me because I can't see the chat. I don't know what's going on with that. But so I'm going to rely on Blake, if you could, to put the chat in the question and answers here for the um, our Zoom call so I can get those up there. So the first question is, do all members receive free continuing education from the ADAA Educational Library? So that's the first question. Okay, awesome. Okay, Miss Betty, take it away. Well, thank you everyone for being here this evening. We're so glad you all are here. Whether you're a member or a non-member, um, we're so excited that you have chosen to spend your evening with us. And we want to encourage you to become a member if you are not a member already. ADAA represents dental assistants from all different uh, varieties. We, we support the chair side, the business assistant, these uh, dental assisting sales rep, um, dental assisting educators, dental lab techs, uh, whatever you, um, you're involved with in dentistry, we would love to have you join us. We're a great group of people, um, passionate dental assistants. We love what we do and we want you to be a part of us. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about membership and the benefits. Um, and if you'll go on to the next slide, is there, an, is there another slide, Blake? There you go. Okay. okay. Um, we are a tripartite membership. That means there's three components. We have a national level, a state level, and a local level. And um, if you are not involved already, um, sometimes you want, might want to start on the local and state level and then um, uh, become involved in the national level. We'd love to have you join us. Um, we offer a lot of education. We have over 121 um, uh, education courses that are available 24-7. Uh, you can do those online at the convenience of your home, um, and they're all PACE accredited um, uh, CE courses. And they're for business assistants as well as um, chair side assistants. There's a variety of topics. So we encourage you to take those if you haven't. Um, we also have um, the professional, over $50,000 professional liability insurance. We have um, dental job, dental workers um, is our job search and resume posting site um, uh, company that we work with. Uh, you get a subscription to the Dental Assisting Journal we have uh, discounts on scrubs, um, Office Max, Office Depot, um, hotel and car rentals. There's all kinds of um, membership benefits that, um, that we have. Uh, and you can go to our website and um, there's an entire listing there of all the um, benefits. Um, membership dues are $125 a year. And then you um, have your state uh, dues um, um, depending on where, what state you're in, uh, what your state dues are. So um, if you have any questions, um, our website is listed there. And Jennifer Porter is our membership um, person and her email is there also. And reach out to any of your state, um, local or uh, national uh, officers or trustees. And uh, they'll be glad to help you, mentor you through um, in any way they can. So just reach out to us and let us know how we can help you. And oh, that's, that's so again. that's uh, so awesome. So can I do a quick poll here? If you have used the uh, benefits like the scrubs or the discounts or anything like that uh, from the ADAA, put a yes or no in the um, in the chat for us so we can kind of get a little feel 
about what benefits people are using. That would be awesome. And Sheree, one more thing. I'd like to also say that um, uh, President Camusi and I will be at the AGD meeting next week. So if any, um, any assistants are in the area, please come by and visit us at the booth. Oh yes, there, there'll be prizes there too, guys. Just yes. say it. <laughs> There's always swag to be had, right? There is. There is. So thank you. And I want to tell you, I, uh, I found that myself, I don't use a lot of the discounts, but I go on the site all the time. And one of the things that I use a lot personally is like state guidelines, right? Because we always want to know what's going on in our state. What can we do as dental assistants legally and all those kind of things. So that's one of the really great, um, one of the great benefits. And look, I love that. Um, Leslie said, no, she's used the CEs are great, you guys. There, there's just so many, especially if you have new dental assistants out there, right? Then they need some extra training. This is a great opportunity for them for that. So I think that we want to hear, we've got our friend, this is Amy. And Amy is going to tell us why she has been a member of the ADAA. So can you do that? And then we'll get Malia to tell us her story. Amy is a little bit frozen right now, isn't she? <laughs> That's awesome, Tanya. Don't use a discount. I do take advantage of that. I'm so sorry that we can't hear Amy's. Um, can anybody hear her, Blake? Can you guys, if you can hear Amy, put it into the chat for me. I don't see anybody chatting. So does that mean yes? No, you can't hear her. Okay. Amy has been with us for a while and she's so delightful um, to share her, um, her vision and the reason why she's a member. And it's really because to get a like-like person, you know what I mean? To be able to um, be able to uh, connect with people because, you know, Nobody understands what you do better than another dental assistant. So having that connection with somebody else to talk to is huge. And I find that the people I have met through the organization are priceless, just like these women that are on the call with us tonight. It is fabulous to be able to have the, that support and know that there's somebody you can call on. Okay. So Malia, do you want to share with us your why? Yes. Why? <clears throat> why? Why? Well, um, I've been, I am currently a life professional member and I have been a continuous ADAA member for 45 years no since way. November. Yes. Yeah, since November 1st, 1975. And since it's been so many years and a lot of stuff has happened in 45 years, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read a little bit about myself so I could remember everything since it's been 45 years. I said I was wet behind the ears in the dental assistant that graduated from Northeast Wisconsin Technical, Technical Institute in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I grew up in a small community in northern Wisconsin, and I moved to the big city to pursue my dental assistant career. Mind you, I live in a state with no requirements for registration, licensure, or certification. I loved being a dental assistant. I mean, I really loved working with my dentist employers, my team members and most important, the patients that were young and older. And I went into dentistry. I knew if I was going to grow professionally and personally with an ever changing career of dentistry, I had to advance my career myself. I needed not only continuing education, but I wanted a professional organization that I could network with my peers and so much more. You see, I wanted to be the best dental assistant I could be. And I had a thirst for everything a dentistry had to offer, and I wanted to be a part of that. I also wanted to advance financially in my career, too, don't we all? So I became a certified dental assistant and a certified dental practice administrator, a management administrator. I started out and I joined the local chapter in Green Bay, and I became a more educationally informed dental assistant. And to this day, 
Some of my best friends are from the ADAA and their members. But with all the organizations that are out there, they needed leadership positions. So I volunteered first on the local level. Then I progressed to the state. And now I'm proud to say that I'm the seventh district trustee. So I have so many memories from the ADA as a member and I can't wait to make more. And I have some stories, but I probably can't repeat all of those tonight. <laughs> but- No way. As, <laughs> yes, and that's part of being with your peers. Um, tonight I heard on TV and, I, and, and I, it struck um, to my heart and it said from the Duke University basketball coach, Mike Krasinski, who is retiring after 46 years of being a coach. He said, if you work at what you love, it's not work. So I wanna know all you non-members out there, what are you waiting for? I can truthfully say that I retired in 2018, but I'm still active with the organization, that I left making a wonderful wage. And I was a dental office manager, a business manager, but I did 26 years of clinical chair side. And I loved both of those different avenues of being a dental assistant, but I, I got to know not only my dental assistant friends, um, dentists and dental hygienists and um, dental salespeople and educators. So um, it's been so worthwhile for myself. Um, I feel personally and professionally. And as you can tell, as I just said, I'm retired out of the dental field, but I, I'm still there. And I just, I, I challenge you people to be part of our community. And there's something out there for you. And the blessing that has been for this past 12 months for continuing education, where can you go get, to get top notch dental assistant education as part of your membership? I mean, you can't go wrong. So um, if I can do it after 45 years, if I can be a dental assistant that started out with no gloves, no eyewear, no face mask, and now graduated into all of the progression of infection control, you can do it too. So I'm looking forward to seeing much more membership after this meeting tonight. Thank you. That's awesome, Malia. I really appreciate that. And, and I too started with no gloves, right? And everybody says, oh my God. But I tell you guys, there's always something to learn always something to learn. And I was talking to somebody today about that, that it's just a constant journey. And I think we have to put ourselves out there for that, right? Okay, are you ready? Trivia question number two. Is the ADAA a bipartite or a tripartite organization? Don't make me say that again, right? Hey, Tony, 30 years, rock on girl. Rock on, I can't say those words, but there you go. All right, okay. Blake is keeping track of all the answers in there, guys. So we can have our we can have our winner at the end. All right. So, you know, the organization has a ton of stuff. We've already alluded to all the education that is available within the program, and but there's other ways that we can grow, and the um, the dental assistant association can really help us. So our friend Natalie is going to talk to us about programs that are available through the through the um, association that gets you initials behind your name right and I think you guys give a bunch of emojis to our friend Natalie she's got more alphabets than anybody I've ever met in my entire life so let's give it up for Natalie come on and tell us about what what can the what can the um, organization do to help me grow well hi everyone look at those um, initials guys look at them <laughs> I'm also going to have a few more added not too long from now. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Talk about a long time um, learner, right? Right. There are a lot of opportunities for not only personal growth, but professional growth within the ADAA. And one of the areas is with in conjunction with our continuing education, uh, whether it is through ADAA or through... Uh, the health department or through your office, and that is our fellowship and our mastership program. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each of them. 
our fellowship program is um, consists of 300 hours of continuing education. I know that sounds like a lot. However, you have 10 years to complete that. And if you are DNB certified, guess what? You get a credit of 150 hours. So you only have to do 150. Sounding better? Uh, if you're not DMV certified, but if you um, are an RDA from California or Michigan, a certified Ohio dental assistant from Ohio, or an LDA from Minnesota, you also will receive a hundred uh, hour credit um, towards your requirements. Uh, eligibility, you do need to be a um, active member within the association. Unfortunately, at this time, students are not eligible. However, the Committee on Fellowship and Mastership are looking at some perhaps pathways for students in the future. Uh, we have two different pathways. Uh, we have our clinical pathway as well as our business pathway, and it's broken down into uh, some areas that overlap between the business and the clinical pathway. Uh, you are required to do 24 continuing ed hours in infection control and 24 in medical emergencies. Again, that is over 10 years. Uh, and that um, overlaps between both the clinical and the business pathways. And then there's specialty um, areas, dental materials, um, uh, diagnostic tools, as well as the various dental specialties for the clinical pathways. And then the business pathways, there's a different business aspects or ad administrative aspects uh, for continuing education requirements. And then at the end, there's also an elective category where if you can't figure out where it goes, as long as it's dentally related, you can put uh, it into electives. Uh, you do need to con Complete 100 hours in lecture hours uh, doesn't necessarily mean face-to-face -face because a lot of the webinars that are live, as long as your certificate says that it is considered a live webinar, you do get lecture credit for that. Other requirements include at least 50 uh, hours in ADAA-sponsored education, whether it be webinars, home study, uh, or face-to-face -face lectures. And then we also have 12 hours of ADAA home study um, continuing education requirement. And that is both for business and uh, clinical. Next slide, please. So for mastership, you need to complete fellowship. And I know that sounds kind of daunting, especially if you not, are not a CDA or um, one of the other designatory uh, credentials where you can get 150 hours of credit. But with the access to continuing education, especially ADAA's continuing ed library, you could be doing education pretty much around the clock, which some of our members actually seem to be doing. Uh, I'm the one that reviews all of the reports that come in for both of the programs. And some of them are doing like you know, 25 credits a week, which is amazing. On to mastership, uh, you don't get any um, credit for being a CDA or an RDA or an LDA, um, but you do need to uh, be an active member. Again, students are not eligible for the mastership because you do need to become a fellow first. Uh, there's two pathways right now, uh, clinical and business. And the requirements are a little more hefty uh, with mastership. It's a little more difficult to attain. Again, you have 10 years to complete it. And it is 400 continuing education hours. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but if you look at the guidelines and the different opportunities you have, um, it goes fairly quick. Types of education, uh, we do require a hands-on component or participation component. And for a course to 
satisfy the participation requirement, it is required to have at least 30% of the time actually being hands-on. Uh, so examples of this would be hands-on CPR. Uh, you go on to um, hands-on radiography, update, brush up your technique type thing, that would count. Um, a bleaching course where you fabricate bleaching trays, things like that. Other requirements include 175 hours in lecture credits. Uh, there's also the 50 credits hours of ADAA sponsored education and 20 hours of ADAA home study credits. There's also a um, community service requirement uh, of a minimum of 20 hours with a maximum of 50 hours. With the participation credits, uh, say you do uh, Mission of Mercy or Give Kids a Smile. Uh, those would count towards community service. It would be hour for hour. However, if you do a course that's hands-on, let's do um, how to monitor nitrous oxide or administer nitrous oxide if it's available in your state. Say it's a six hour course, you would receive one and a half hours times each credit hour towards the subject. Um, so you would actually uh, earn nine credits of nitrous oxide um, continuing education. So it does add up fairly quick. If you're enrolled in a bachelor's program and take any courses that could be applied towards dental assisting, dentistry, dental hygiene, you can get credit for college courses. Um, and there's specific requirements for that. There's also opportunities to write um, articles and get credit for that, um, as long as you don't get remunerated for that financially, and home study courses too. So there's lots of different opportunities. Um, Non-eligible education, unfortunately, would include um, getting credit for visiting a exhibit floor. You don't get credit for that. I know some states do um, grant credit for just visiting the exhibit floor. That type of credit doesn't uh, count towards this program. Uh, another example of that would be um, for just going to a meeting. Um, some states will give you credit for going towards that. Uh, time involved. You know, you have 10 years to complete it. I would like to let you know that quickest, I believe, was 12 months. Uh, we had some pretty, uh, pretty quick speed demons that wanted to get through quickly. Uh, most people probably average four or five years, uh, depending on, you know, what's going on in their lives. Um, what you do need to do is submit periodically um, your coursework and uh, ADAA keeps track of that. We kind of move things around so that help you um, meet your goals. And there's always mentors available for anybody who would like one. Next slide, please, Blake. So why would you wanna pursue either fellowship or mastership? First of all, um, personal development. Um, my story, uh, I was a brand new dental assistant back in 1994. I practiced in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was in general practice and I saw the advertisement for the program in the ad uh, in the dental assisting journal and you know showed my doctor. And uh, I said, you know what, I'm gonna pursue this. And he's like, well, why would you wanna do that? Okay, if you know me, uh, if you challenge me, I'm one of those that will go above and beyond. Found that out. Uh, with being a Girl Scout, I had to be the first to get all the Girl Scout badges. So uh, I wasn't the first fellow. However, I was the second fellow and I was the first master. So um, it was quite an accomplishment. Uh, the program went into, um, into being back in 1997 and our first graduating class of fellows was in July of 1999. And in the photo here, um, three of the four fellows went on to become um, past, become presidents of the ADAA. So that's kind of cool. Uh, professional development, you really grow and you really challenge yourself in taking different courses where um, you probably wouldn't think about taking. Um, perhaps you're, you know, you're, you need to do like implant courses, um, 
intraoral camera courses, if you pursue the business pathway, um, there's different things about learning about taxes in the dental profession and so forth. And lastly, the prestige of uh, being able to have those initials behind your name, F-A-D-A-A -A for fellows, M-A-D-A-A -A for masters. As long as you maintain um, active membership within ADAA, you are allowed to use those credentials. And we'd love to have you in the ranks of the few um, members that are either fellows or masters. Thanks, everyone. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to look on our website. Uh, you can contact Jennifer Porter, who oversees Fellowship Mastership, uh, or if you want to reach out to me, that would be great, too. Thank so, you. So before you sign off of there, Natalie, um, so Leslie said on the picture, like, who is the picture slide and why pursue fellowship? So I want to make sure that we answered that uh, completely for Leslie. So Leslie, if we did not, please put it in the chat so that I can kind of see what that is. Oh, who are the graduates in the slide? So she wants to know their names. Oh, sure. The lady in pink was a president. That was Carla Schneider from North Dakota. They're all in pink. She went on Natalie. to serve as chair of Danby. Uh, next to her was Fran Holbrook from Illinois. She uh, has since retired from the profession. Uh, then I believe it was me. Uh, the blonde is Kathy Roberts, who currently serves as vice president of ADAA. She's also a past president uh, in 2007, I think. And then the one on the end next to the flag is Christy Borquez from California, who um, was president in 2004. Rock on, right? So I just want to preface it that those ladies went on to do this, but that's not a requirement, right? It's just an extra love that you can have into your, your bread basket. And I got to tell you guys, I'm working on my fellowship now. I'm almost done. Um, and I found that, oh, I got to go back and take my basic sciences. I'm like, really? So I'm, I'm struggling to find courses that are interesting to me for basic science, but whatever, I'm working on that. So if anybody has any idea, let me know. Um, so send I've, me an email, I'll find you something. Okay, <laughs> Matt, it's gonna send me so, an email, right? But I find yeah. that I'm, I'm challenging, I'm learning new things. And as my role for dental assistant education, then I'm like, hey, I learned something new, I'm gonna share it. And that's how you guys would be too, right? You learn something new and you take it back into your office and you share it with your friends. And then they think you are the smartest things that slice bread. So that's really cool. And, and I just want to encourage everybody to take advantage of the program and, and, um, and do that. All right. So rock on. That's so good, Leslie. I appreciate it. So, uh, and Danielle says she's working on her mastership too. So you go. I'm so pleased. Danielle Tharp, yep. <laughs> I know, right? I'm so pleased that there's so much community service involved in that, in that um, program too. That really... Uh, for those of us who don't get our fingers wet every day, that's a really good thing to have. All right. Well, so, and Sherry, yeah. Sherry, if I could interject real quickly, um, for those of you that go or come from states where you are required to do continuing education, it's not that you would be doing a lot more than what you currently have to do right. for your states per year. So it's right. just something to keep in mind. And it's a kind of almost like a double dipper there, guys. You can use it, it for is. state plus mm -hmm. turn it in. So um, yeah, I've done that already several times. All right, so thank you for that. I wanna get on to our, our keynote speaker for the evening, Carolyn. And uh, she's gonna talk to us about Cure Lights. And I'm telling you guys, no lie. Every time I hear her, I learn something new because like I said in our in our commercial, I thought I knew the cure light, but I did not. <laughs> Just saying. So I want to invite our friend Carolyn. Come on up and give us your spiel, girl. All right. Thanks, Cherie. Thank you, ladies. Wow, what an organization. Um, I learned a lot just, just listening to you all. And thank you. For, for educating me. So um, anyway, just, I know I'm the, the last thing or close to the last thing before the next trivia question and, and getting everybody on with their evenings, but just quick, um, wanted to touch base. I'm Carolyn with Alternate Products. So as Cherie mentioned, um, 
it, it's not necessarily commercial, but it, we are going to be talking about Ultradent products and the, the Velo curing light. So we'll just do a quick um, overview of broadband curing, and we'll talk about the different uh, curing modes that the Velo curing light has. I'm hoping that many of you that are on this uh, live feed are have either been exposed to the curing light or are using it currently in your office. So we'll talk about the um, just different curing modes, the collimation, why that's important. And I'll do my trusty little magic trick, which I know my friend Cherie knows. Um, and then we'll talk about the angulation and why that's really, really important. You'll see in some slides that I have. So, and then we'll just talk about the durability. That's probably the biggest thing. And I, you'll hear me say it a million times. So with that, Blake, if you can just go ahead and, and uh, forward to the next slide. I too, like Natalie, am from Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and I, I choose to share our summer photos for the most part, because <laughs> you know it it can get quite cold here, and uh, you know we think thirty is like seventy on certain days. So, anyway, just a little background on me. Uh, next slide, Blake, please. I told him I'm used to controlling all this. So now I'm controlling him is what he says. So <laughs> gotta love here, that, right? here we go. Um, just a little background on Ultradent products. If you don't know who we are um, or haven't heard of Dr. Dan Fisher, he's an amazing man. I just wanna at least first and foremost say that. Um, he, if you ever get a chance to hear him lecture, please, do what you can to get there. Uh, he's an amazing man. He's salt of the earth, philanthropist, humanitarian, treats all of us employees like family. We have uh, about 1600 employees, I think globally now. And honest engine, <laughs> I think he knows everybody's name. <laughs> it's crazy. And he's just, again, his mission is to improve oral health globally. And that's, he is, still very involved in our research and development as well. So we are a USA manufacturer, which is something we are very, very, very proud of. Uh, we manufacture about 95% of our products and we export about 75%, which not a lot of people know that. Um, and very unusual for, for companies nowadays. A lot of times we're, we're importing and we're actually exporting. So we're proud of that. Next slide, Blake. I keep wanting to hit my computer. So. I know, right? Smack it around. <laughs> uh, just a quick snapshot of our beautiful uh, backdrop at our headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, it, it's, it, it truly looks like this in person. For those of you, if anybody's joining us from Salt Lake, you know you have this view and it's stunning, stunning. It just looks fake. Every time I look out our corporate headquarter windows, we face this beautiful mountain range. So. Next slide, Blake. Thanks. This is our team. Um, we have about 156 reps across the US that cover, hopefully many of you know who they are um, and, and work closely with them, I'm guessing. Um, outside of the 156 reps that are in here, we have some of our brand team, we have some of our seminar team, but again, this is the Ultradent family, so. Uh, we that's where it happens um the the curing light getting into the curing light getting into the guts of this um 10 year anniversary we just celebrated um well we're in our 12th year actually but again if you have not been exposed to this if you do know your local rep have them you know loan you a demo light some of them may kill me for saying that but i'm sure they'd be more than willing so anyway next slide blake <laughs> This is just the whole family of the curing lights and they all look the same probably to you uh, minus the cord, but they're different to me. The, the colored velos are actually our newest velo, which is, it's just got a larger curing. And I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this, Cherie? You can, you can tell uh, yes, me. I can see that. Hold it a little know. closer. There you go. Good. So you can see that the lens head here is 12 millimeters. This is our newest one, the Velo Grand, and this is 10 millimeters, which is our original Velo. So again, that's just kind of the, the whole family. And then we have our Ortho Velo, which has specific 
bracket curing capabilities. So that's really the only difference to that one. Nice. Slide, Blake. Feel free to interrupt me, Sheree. I will. I'm an inquirer in mine. You know that. I know. <laughs> I love it. But you've seen this before, too. I still will ask questions. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so as you can see, so the, the thing with the curing light is we have four LEDs in this <sighs> in this light, which basically you have three curing lights in one. And that's one of the cool factors, I think. I always say, you know, typically with most curing lights, you're buying one uh, curing light with one capability. With this one, you have a standard mode, which is a thousand milliwatts per squared centimeter. And then the we have an extra power mode, which is 1400 milliwatts per squared centimeter. And then we have 3200 milliwatts per squared centimeter, which is a three second cure. So you have capability from three second curing to tacking to just your standard five second cure, which is amazing. Um, and again, the durability of it. I always say this is basically a fully repairable light. Um, the only thing, and you'll see, hopefully we'll get to play the, the short little uh, video on the manufacturing. The only thing that typically, if anything goes wrong with this, it's the lens on this curing light. If it drops or cracks or you get composite on it, whatnot, that's something that, that can be, but again, fully repairable. So durability and the five-year warranty is huge. There's not, I, 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 I think we're unmatched on that, but don't quote me. <laughs> so can I ask a question before you go on though, right? Raise so your I know hand. I, I'm raising my hand. I don't know, you can't see me here. I but, <laughs> But so I, I, I want to, uh, we're talking about the Velo specifically, but these things that we're uh, learning go to all cure lights, right? They go to all of them um, because there's other cure lights that have modes just like this one does. And so I think that helping us to understand that um, there are modes on all of them that do different things. And so I just wanted to kind of put that little plug in there really quick yep. before we go any further, because I know you're going to talk about modes, right? Yes, uh -huh. I will there you show go. that for sure. <laughs> Next slide, Blake. Thanks, Sheree. You're welcome. So again, just this manufactured in Salt Lake City, Utah, um, but I want to show you. So it starts out like this, and this is where the durability, can you see that, Sheree? I can. Okay. The um, durability of this, again, unmatched. It's one, it's a wand that starts out as a solid piece that then is milled. And I, I kind of stole this off the line when <laughs> we were out there one day. I was like, can I have one of those? So, you know, again, it takes about, I think we've reduced it, but it used to be 19 minutes per light to actually mill it and make it, you know, so that we can put the electronics in it. So it's super cool process, machine that's specific to it. Next slide, Blake. That's really cool. Yeah. Here... I, are you able to play that perfect? We'll listen to this real quickly. Oh, there's no sound. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to narrate for us. Ooh, I will narrate. So there's the solid wand that I was talking about. The big thing here is the, um, where you're able to just be on top of what you're curing, on top of that, that restoration. Um, but again, this is just the milling process. You can kind of see this is the fancy machine. Now, I kid you not, they did that thousands and thousands and thousands of times to test the quality of this light because we know that's that's what happens in a dental office, right? It's a real world, right? It's real a world real right world. There. So again, that was just part of the process because there's a lot of curing lights out there that are um, you know, have plastic housings. And again, you know, that drops on the floor from, you know, chair side, chances are that might not make it, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's probably gonna go into a few pieces. So again, this is talking about the, the standard mode, the high power, and then the extra power mode. So the three second cure, which is huge. This is all of our um, accessory tips that we have available for different things for being able to see um, sealant. Our, our sealant in particular has fluorescence, you can see right there. So it's a black light, which is 
kind of cool factor, right? Uh -huh. you, can, you can see that sealant still exists. So again, a lot of people like that. And again, numerous awards that we've had year after year after year. So that we're really proud of, of course. So I next. think one of the one of the big things with that is the angle of the head, right? Mm -hmm. It's that's where the the business end is at. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow that from you, Sheree. The business end. <laughs> the business end. That's I right. like it. <laughs> so again, the standard power. So right now, hopefully you guys can see this. But right now I have this in the standard power with, it's just the solid green. Are you able to see that? Not, not too much, but we okay. get the idea. All right. So anyway, this is each one of these little uh, indicators here is five seconds. So right now I'm in a standard five second. To change that, I'm just gonna hold that mode down. I'm now in 10 seconds, super easy. 15 seconds, 20 seconds. So if you want to do a 20 second cure, perfect. You just set it like that. The big thing with this that not a lot of people know is you're able to lock it. So if you have somebody in the office that wants to use it just in a three second mode, you can literally just lock it. You hold these two buttons down and you hear a little beep, beep, beep. That means it's locked. And to unlock it, you just do the same thing. So not a lot of people know that about mm -hmm. this light. Um, there, I just unlocked it. And then to, to get it into our tacking mode, I'm gonna hold this down again. And you can see that the green, hopefully you can see. Not really, flashing. but it's okay. Yeah, a little no. bit. Okay. The green is flashing. That's when you know it's in the tacking mode. So you have a four second cure on that and just the green is blinking. Now for me to get it in the three second mode, I'm gonna hold this mode button down and everything's blinking. That's when you know it's in that three second mode. And a lot of people tend to confuse the three second and the tacking mode. So again, if a doctor's wanting to use the three second mode, I would lock it. I would highly recommend locking it. So again, versatility. It's, it's, you have the capability to do, um, you know, multiple, multiple things, especially tacking if you're doing full moth veneer case or whatever the situation may be. This picture here to the right is just showing you, and Dr. Fisher always talks about not only the depth of cure, but the breadth of cure, how important that is. And this is showing you that this curing light is actually the uniformity of it and, and the homogenous um, cure that you get with this, this light. And my magic trick is coming up shortly, so. I love that magic trick. And before you, while you're getting your magic trick ready, I yeah. wanted to, um, to like reiterate, this is not, I wish I could say that word, stress. That's a word I'm gonna use, right? That other curing lights still have that, um, those, modes on there and mm -hmm. I don't know how many times somebody would come to me and it's in like in a fast mode and they'll tell me this cure light is broken we can't mm -hmm. fix it this cure line is broken but they didn't understand that it's in a different mode right so right. I would recommend that you guys whatever curing light that you have in your office find your uh um your user's menu your instructions for use IFU from the manufacturer and it yeah. will tell you about those modes because a lot of them there's probably not uh IFU in the office for that so I find them all on a google search it's really easy yeah. um and that will really help you to find that because uh, it is one of the things that people will send them in for repair when really mm -hmm. it's just locked on the mode and they right. don't realize that. Yep. Thank you, Sheree. Very good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Next slide, Blake. And again, this is similar to the, to the last slide, but what this is talking about really is the, the different LEDs and, and, how we're able to cure basically all materials that are out there. A lot of the materials, resins, used to be CQ based, right? And now we're finding a lot more proprietary stuff, which again, with the Velo, the big thing is that you're curing that entire spectrum. So you don't have to worry. I mean, I always say bench test it on whatever you're using outside the mouth, just to make sure that you're, um, 
that it is curing because I know, especially with um, composites now with bulk fill, that's a big thing, right? Bulk fill seems to be a, a hot product right now. So I get asked that question all the time. Will the three second cure work on the bulk fill? And I say, you know what? Test it outside the mouth. Do what you would do as a bulk fill and then cut it just to just for insurance, right? And to to peace of mind to know that it's doing what it needs to do. So again, this just shows you the LEDs that are in there um, and that we're covering that entire spectrum, so. So I took a class on composites and actually, I, cause I'm, I need to write stuff for the Cure Light, right? To teach mm. everybody. And um, one of the things I learned that I did not realize was the darker the shade, the longer it has to be cured. So if you have, if you're using a shade of composite that's really uh, very, very yeah. light, it takes less time than if you're using, like if you're using a bleach shade, it's less time to cure for the same depth than if you're using like a, a an A35 or a, or a C4, something like that. And I did not even know that, that it, it was a time limit on that. And if you guys, if you don't know what a bench test is, then that is just, you take your composite and you extrude it onto the onto the table top, and uh, but don't just do it a little lot, a little stream. Like you got to pile it up like it would be in a filling, and yeah. then cure it like you normally would, and then turn it over on the bottom, and then start your cut from the bottom, and you'll see how much of it cured or how much of it did not. Sometimes you can cut the bottom with a um, like with a scalpel blade. A Bart Parker, um, yeah. and then that you'll see that wow, this is not being cured, and a lot of that has to do with that angle too, right? That yeah. angle yeah. makes all the different scenarios. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Sheree. Next slide, Blake. Perfect. This just again what what I was saying earlier with the depth of cure and Dr. Fisher, you know, saying not only the depth is so important, but the breadth of cure and what your surface area is. So, next slide. This again is just the components of it. You can see we have the aerospace aluminum, um, which has that durability. And then the ceramic piece that's in here, uh, which the LEDs are attached to. So we have the four LEDs attached to that ceramic. And then there's just a rhodium coating. And then on top of that rhodium coating is the actual lens um, that just, you can literally, well, I can't on that one, but you can, this just screws off if you needed you know, that's where the, the replacement comes in if it's necessary. So mm -hmm. again, durability. Next slide, Blake. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So here's the little magic trick. Um, you can see the depth of cure on this. Um, the Velo in particular, we have some competitive lights on there, which we aren't naming, but 15 millimeters is what we're, what we're looking at on just the regular Velo. So you can see, can you see this, Sheree? I can, go for okay. it. I love this okay. trick. Can you see that? All the way to the bottom, yes I can. Yeah, so again, you can see that collimation. Mm -hmm. And why is that important? It goes back to that photo that I was talking about earlier and it's getting that depth, but it's also getting that breadth of cure. So again, super important. Yeah, and that's really important too, because sometimes I know we're curing and I'm not paying that much attention. I'm holding the cure light, but it's not in my, I'm not looking at it, right? So let's say that I'm doing a class two and uh, especially on the mesial. So it's tilted a little bit, and mm -hmm. the light is not going directly into that mesial area. That's the part that fails because it's not cured properly. So mm -hmm. I think that understanding that even if you're using, uh, it really doesn't, I'm gonna say this in a weird way. It's a lot of times your light is so very important, but also the technique is what's more important. So even if you have this uh, little flat angle, which is the bomb, but you have to use it correctly in order to get the, the benefits of the settings, if that makes sense. So straight on as you can get it is the best. And if your patient doesn't have a flip top head, that could be very difficult mm -hmm. uh, for some of those posterior areas, especially if you're using the one that's got the, um, the angled 
uh, the long tip that's gold in the angle on it, that could be really difficult to get it in there. There's a black tip too for that. But anyway, that's all about that depth of field, right? Yeah. See, you, you're just leading right into my next slide. Oh, well, I, I should be to doing do this. I should be having you do this. <laughs> I love it. Right on cue. We didn't practice either. No, we didn't. Um, <laughs> so you can see, and this is where that, that angulation, you know, most of them have 60 to 90 degree angles on them. And you can see posterior, you know, I, I don't have a large range of motion, you know, to, to, to get back there if, if I had that 60 to 90 degree angle. So you can see when you've got the, this light right on top of that restoration, you know that you're curing that restoration. Whereas with the angulation that you see in this photo, that potentially you're not, not quite getting right on top of that. And this next slide, um, actually I'll show that. Right on cue, Blake, you're hired. <laughs> And so this goes to what Cherie was talking about on potentially not curing a, a particular area. So especially add a, add a matrix in there and you can see right there, if you have that angulation and I mean, are we always a hundred percent paying attention when you have that curing light in the mouth? You might be talking, having a conversation. You don't know quite if you're on that restoration the way that you should be, but you can see this whole area potentially will not cure if you don't have that, that business end of the curing light <laughs> on top of, of, of that restoration. So, and these are just two photos showing that, you know, this was one where the, the metal matrix got in that way, got in the way and didn't cure that, that restoration. So next slide, Blake. Okay. And again, not to beat a dead horse, but you can see just the different ones that are out there and why it is important to have that, that very minimal um, angulation on the, on the curing light, so. Awesome. The big thing with these, the batteries. So I think you all can probably attest to at some point in time, battery replacement costs for a lot of the lights that are out there are super expensive, right? So with ours, they're just rechargeable batteries, um, really inexpensive. They're about $14 for a set of two of them. You get four with the light, but again, rechargeable. So really inexpensive. You're not gonna be paying you know, $175 to $300 for a replacement battery. So that's where, and that's hard to monetize, right? Um, mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of people just don't necessarily understand that piece of it. They're like, well, yeah, but you know, I can replace that. It might be two years down the road, but again, if you're paying $300 for a new battery, that's expensive. So um, next slide, Blake. And then the curing tips that I was talking about. The, so we have our, our point cure lens, which again is this top right one, which is tacking that's going to be used for tack curing veneers. Um, and then we have our little black light, which is, is for any fluorescence, you know, to see if that sealant material is still existing, which is great. And they're all magnetic. So they just literally pop right on super easy. So, and then, yeah, thanks Blake. Uh, the kit contents, you get the entire, um, with the kit, you get the curing light, the batteries, you get, like I said, two sets of batteries. One I always recommend having on the charger and then one set in the actual light itself. You get 400 10 second cures off of fully charged batteries. So typically in most offices, we find that lasts about a week. So again, just depends on the office. That's really but, cool off of one charge to go a yep. whole week. Yep. So Monday morning is just kind of part of the protocol. Just replace the new batteries and put the other ones in the charger and just do that each week. So should you leave the char the batteries in the charger or let them charge for a couple of hours and then take them out? No, you can leave them in there. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So you know, sometimes some things it kind of overcharges. So yeah. nice to know. Yep. Good question. I know, I'm full of them, Mia. I know, I know. You're the perfect host. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, want to know things. 
<laughs> yeah, and then the importance of protective eyewear. I think that, you know, that goes without saying, right? Um, we do have a lens that comes in the kit, but again, depending on the patient, you may not be able to get that um, posterior the way that you want. So the glasses like this shows or the paddle, a lot of the offices have the paddle. So, um, but protecting the eyes is key, key. And then the other thing that you see there, um, just real quick before we go on to that, Blake, is the, um, I can't tell you how, I can't tell you how many lights we run into and I mentioned this earlier that have composites caked on the lens um, because they're not they're not wrapping they're not putting a barrier on it and that's what's gonna the longevity of your light your light is gonna be it's gonna last so much longer from just not putting um, you know having all the chemicals number one but just protecting it from everything so get the little barrier sleeves they're really really slick they just go on cure right through them you don't have to worry about any composite on the lens so next slide that's pretty nice yeah protect your investment people yes protect your investment for sure and then cleaning and maintenance um the big thing with this is you just want to use an isopropyl um alcohol or a Lysol brand three is you're able to use as well. Um, cabicide, we're slowly kind of getting away from the cabicide. And that is just because of some chemical changes that they've done. It just erodes the, the coating. So again, if you're using the sleeves and just wiping it with the isopropyl alcohol, you should be good. We're, um, slowly kind of, uh, as the new curing lights are going out, the new um, cleaning instructions are coming out with it as well, so. So are there custom covers for the Velo? These, we have two kinds. The, this one that I have with me right now is kind of a, it's not as um, snug. I mean, I, it might look snug to, to most people, but we have one that actually almost suctions on there. It's, they're a little more expensive, but they're, um, they, they're just a lot, you're, you're not, you don't have this moving around. Right. Like, literally and, have that. and that extra plastic, the space in the plastic, does that make a difference in the curanticity? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, good. No, question. no, no. I meant if it's uh, too loose. Oh, no, uh -uh. no. Oh, nice to know. Yeah. Okay. No, um, and no, while no. she's talking about that, I want to tell you guys this. I didn't even know this until a few years ago. Um, not the Velo, but other curing lights, the tip, the glass tip probably comes out and they're autoclavable. Who knew, right? So if it, if you have a curing light that it comes out, um, then it should be autoclavable. But once again, I want to go back to get your manufacturer's instructions for yes. use. Um, because it'll tell you exactly how to care for that cure light, right? Uh, what chemicals you can put on it or not. Um, and then once again, if you get a lot of times, we don't because we're busy, right? Remember when I started, I said that all of a sudden the world remembers that they have teeth. So we're crazy busy. Um, we don't bag it. And then we get composite. A blade, like if you use something sharp, and I know I've seen people use scalpel blades. I've seen people use curettes. I've seen people use uh, just a metal, like a PCI instrument or a P1, something like that to flick that composite off. It will scratch your lens. Yes. And then if you think about that, that lens is scratched. And now the light, that scratch makes like, um, makes a place where the light is now going like in a, in a different direction, mm -hmm. right? So it's not coming straight down. It's so really now blocking you're, it. Right, you're blocking it. So now your mm -hmm. collimation is differently and you're going to have like, yeah. um, for lack of a better term, a dead spot in the middle because of that scratch. So mm -hmm. don't use anything metal. Um, if you do need something metal, then wrap it up in a gauze, like take yeah. a two by two and wrap it in there and push it off with that way. Um, because, you know, right now, like we would love to like, oh my God, let's just jump on the site and order us a Velo right now. Right. So I'm going to tell you guys, watch your supply spend and then you'll yeah. be able to go through and, and uh, possibly start buying Velos to replace it. Because if you don't have it now, you still need to take care of the other ones. Right. 
Um, so can you ask me, there are non, are there any non-alcohol wipes that are approved to use on these? Quantitary ammonium. Uh, Lysol brand three, the Lysol, Lysol three, okay. concentrate, which is alcohol based only. Okay. Um, and then the isopropyl alcohol. And good old and, soap and water too is good for us guys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Any other questions before I let Carolyn go? Yeah, that's it. Oh, so, actually, Cindy, this is a great question. So she's talking about, uh, uh, validating the cure. She, she says she can't remember what they're called, but is there a measuring device with the Velo curing light to make sure it's being effective? Good question. Um, a radiometer. A radiometer, yeah, right. And I saw them. Yeah. I saw them on Henry Shine the other day. They're a little pricey, but it's still cheaper than a new cure light, right? So you could verify that it's working. Um, yeah. But that's, that's where that bench test comes in too, people. And the big thing is, is to, if you have a radiometer in the office, one that you're, if you get a new light, bench test it, like the moment you get it, just uh -huh. so you have that baseline of where it should be. So good question. Yeah. And you know, you can, um, you can start making like, um, I don't know how to say this, but like a little, a bear of composite and that way, you know, okay. At two millimeters, it, it cured all the way at three millimeters. It cured all the way at five millimeters. It cured all the way yes. seven millimeters. It didn't cure. Right. So then you would know um, that maybe until you get a new light or whatever, that there may need to be incremental in incremental cures for that. Yeah. So holy cow, what? we're over our time. Are we? Oh my gosh. Of course I ran over, but one real quick thing, Sheree, I wanted to mention um, the, the power on the Velo light, it's either a hundred percent or it's not working at all. And you'll get awesome. a red light. You'll get a red light that, that blinks and says battery's done, but you're, you're never compromising your cure. So it'll either be fully at hundred percent or dead. Or it doesn't turn on. Yeah. Some of them will just start to get dimmer and you don't really yes. even notice that. Yes. So play with them, get your manufacturer's instructions for use. And then think about like the direction that yeah. you're putting your light in, right guys? That's so very important. Um, if you have the light that's got the big angle, make sure you take off those metal bands and then cure again um, from lingual and buckle to get that class five, because I mean that class five, that class two, because yeah. that is the number one place that a Philly will fail is for that. So Wow. You. you guys, so they're saying, thank you, Carolyn, that these lights thank are great. You. And Paula said earlier that they love theirs. So I said, oh, you're going to be so happy to hear that, right? Kind of biased. I know, right? We are a little bit. But once again, uh, you know, there's lots of cure lights out there. I think yeah. the main thing is know how to use yours, right? Yeah. And understand yeah. about the direction and then the cure times and the modes. So those are really cool. All right, well guys, I think that I have, um, uh, this is Carolyn's information, like you can uh, contact Ultradent if you want some information. And, and really, by the way, they have amazing training videos on their site. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanna um, brush up on different things, if you need CEs to go towards your fellowship or your mastership, then um, they've got some really good things there that you can tag on that are all completely free too. So um, I have our last trivia question here. So here we go. Any, while I'm trying to find my question, there you go. Do all members receive free continuing education from the ADAA Educational Library? And that would be a yes or a no uh, question there, right? Do all members receive free continuing education? Okay, so I see that there are multiple answers coming into the chat as we speak here. So that's pretty fun. Um, so I want to tell you guys too. So if you go to the next slide, um, Blake, that we have actually some um, uh, promotions going on right now. And I just want to tell you guys about this. So uh, a new member promotion. And if you want to go to the link below, it's adaa.usa.org. 
not dot USA, ADAAUSA.org slash membership slash promotions. And then you can find out that we're going to have $25 off of your national dues. And then um, that would be the, uh, then there's some uh, other additionals, but that would be for your membership is $25 off of that. Um, and if you're interested in joining with us, was please do because it's, it's amazing, this organization. I cannot tell you guys enough about it. Um, but we want you to be able to get take advantage of this. And to do that, you have to submit um, through uh, Sunday, June the 6th, which is this coming Sunday at 11.30 p.m. Central Time. So um, try to get it in before that. But uh, that's the deadline to be able to get that. And then um, this would be for any new members or members who past members who have not renewed for the past three years. So we want to give you that opportunity, help out a little bit because, you know, money's tight, right? Um, but they can also kind of do that. Blake's going to put some um, uh, websites in there for us to do in the slides there. So, okay. So here's the answers to the questions. Has everybody got their um got their answers in and i'm hoping blake has got our person so do. does any okay awesome so does professional membership of the ada receive fifty thousand dollars life insurance policy yes they do and i am so happy about that it's probably the only <laughs> one i'm gonna have right love that and question number two is the ada a bipartite or a tripartite and it's a tri so it's national, state, and then locals. So um, if there's not a local in your area, then start one. I mean, right, just come on and just go in there and start your local and uh, get all your friends and neighbors together because we as dental assistants, we need like minds. We need people like us to fellowship with, right? And then number three, do all members receive free continuing education from the ADAA Educational Library? Well, yes, that's one of the greatest benefits that we have to give you. And there's, like I said, there's tons. Um, and I just reviewed the x-ray one the other day. So it's pretty doggone good, I'm going to tell you, right? So you can get some radiation safety uh, from there. So I, and don't forget, you guys, I know you're on us with Facebook right now. So make sure to tag it. Tell your friends how much you liked it and watch. We're going to, we've been doing these about every other month. So uh, watch for the next one. I don't know what it's going to be or the date yet. Um, if somebody knows that, they can tell me. But um, like us on social media, go in and, and put some posts on there. There's some um, questions that newbies put in there because they're, they're babies, right? So they need to answer the questions. And um, so we're so happy. You guys follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, at LinkedIn and Twitter. And I want to thank you again for spending the extra time. We went 12 minutes over, but I think it was worth it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. thank you so much. Thank you, Carolyn, for joining us. Thank you for Malia for sharing your, your life history with us for <laughs> of your Dental Assistant Association. And, and Betty, I so appreciate the work that you're doing as president. And Natalie, my, my alphabet friend, girl, you just keep on going, right? Natalie, Natalie, I do. I, I hate to interrupt. Um, I, I wanted to announce the winner before we did sign off. Okay. Uh, so uh, it was really close, but the winner is uh, Paula Hancock. Hey, congratulations, yeah. Paula. Yeah. Second place went to Angela Smith. So I appreciate the tenacity. Of, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys all for participating in the trivia. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. So you guys send an email to Jennifer to Jay Porter at adaausa.org and uh, she'll get you hooked up with that prizes. Okay. And uh, so my, my buddy Malia said people out there, like, if you feel like that you, um, you having trouble with the, with the membership dues or anything, ask your bosses. Because when they see that you are interested in pursuing your career and educating yourself more, a lot of times they're so very happy to help you pay for that. Maybe they won't do all of it. Maybe they'll do half. Who knows? But it's worth asking, right? All right. So you guys look for us again. We're going to bring you more relevant technology and relevant um, um subjects, I guess is the word I'm really looking for. So like us, love us, and join us again. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Thanks, everybody.